Hey guys, welcome to Nyoya Cooking. To kickstart the relaunch of our website nyoyacooking.com, we are going to present you a series of recipes which are related to banana leaf rice. Banana leaf rice is one of Malaysia's favorite dishes and we are really really excited because there are so many dishes involved in this dish. So to know more about banana leaf rice, check out the link in the description box. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to cook fish head curry. So fish head curry is very delicious because it's slightly more thicker than other fish curries and it is also richer although they do not use coconut milk. So let's take a look at the cooking process and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to make really delicious fish head curry. Let's start with rice. Now this is just plain jasmine rice. I did not wash it and all I'm going to do is just to pan fry it dry. at low to medium heat and all we're going to do is ensure that it gets brown and then we're going to put it aside and what rice does here is to actually thicken the curry and there is actually more reasons why we use rice in this dish so to know more check out the website nyoyacooking.com while waiting for the rice to brown we are going to blend these ingredients garlic shallots and also dried chilies which are soaked and also de-seeded. And I always forgot ginger. With some tamarind paste, we're going to add water to it and mix well. Once the solution is mixed well, we are going to add it to the fish and marinate the fish for about 10 to 15 minutes with this water. This will also help to get rid of the fishiness from the fish. In this recipe, I'm using pink sea bream. Use any white fishes if you like because uh, fishes like salmon will be too oily and the taste will be too strong and we want to taste the curry here instead. So here I have uh, pink sea bream, I've cut it into three different parts and of course for uh, fish head curry, you need to have fish head. So if you don't want to use it, you can also use other parts of fishes uh, like the fillet or if you want to use the um, tail itself, it's really up to you. Now, uh, we're going to let it sit for a while. The rice has already browned and this is the colour we expect. I'm just going to put it aside. Now that the rice has browned, all I'm going to do is to add it to a pesto mortar and just crush it until it's fine. In this recipe, I'm using a pre-mixed fish curry powder. Now you can get this at uh, Indian stores or in Malaysia or Singapore. You can just go to the supermarket and look for fish curry powder. Now if you don't have it, uh, use any curry powder mixture that is meant for meat, fishes uh, or seafood and that would also do the trick. If you want to make your own curry powder which is meant for fish or also meat, well head on to our website nyoyacooking.com and that's where you can also request for recipes like that. So uh, quickly go on to the website, let me know, pause this video first, go there and come back, I'll show you what to do with this curry powder. Now for this curry powder, I'm going to add a bit of water and all we're going to do is to mix it until it turns into a paste. Now that we have the blended ingredients, the curry paste, it's time to cook. So over here in the wok, I have a bit of oil. We're going to add some sliced brown onion. Once you can smell the onions, that's when we're going to add curry leaves. Give it a few quick stirs and that's when we're going to add mustard seeds and also fenugreek seeds. Mm -hmm. 
You hear the poppings of the mustard seeds and that's when we're going to add the blended ingredients and as usual stir fry for a while until it turns slightly reddish, slightly darker in colour and then we're going to continue with cooking. As you can see, the oil is beginning to separate and that's when we can add the curry powder paste. Now once again, once you realise that the oil starts to separate and that's when we can add rice that we have crushed earlier. And also water. After adding water, increase the heat to let it boil. Now that it's beginning to boil, we'll add the fish. At the same time, vegetables, so we have ladies' fingers, tomatoes, and also brinjal. Now allow this fish to boil for about 8 to 10 minutes depending on the size of the fish that you have. Uh, this whole fish that I bought is about 1 kg. So I'm going to boil it for about 8 to 10 minutes until it's just cooked just nice and we're not going to overcook the fish because we're going to take it out and set it aside. So if you go to a mama stores or a banana leaf rice, you'll realize that sometimes the uh, fish head itself is just placed uh, by itself on the plate or also on the tray and that's because they don't want to overcook the fish and uh, we are going to do the same and then just before serving we're going to add it back into the curry let's wait until this boils the fish is fully cooked so let's remove it Right now, we're just going to let this curry simmer for about another 40 minutes. Now, by doing so, you're going to let the curry release its flavours and that's why leave it aside, don't do anything and we will also want the vegetables to be really soft too. Now, it's really up to you how soft you want it to be. I like it really soft, like not mushy soft, but just soft and nice as you bite into it, it just sinks in your teeth. So. Let's leave this aside, but before that, I'm going to add a bit of sugar just to sweeten the uh, curry. A bit of salt and a little tamarind paste. So this is going to make the curry a little bit more um, flavorful. And of course, salt is very important in this dish. So go easy, less is more and mix well. And as always, I like to just quickly give it a taste test. Mmm, so delicious. Now, give it another 40 minutes, we'll get back to it. The curry has been simmering for about 40 minutes and take a look at it. Beautiful, gorgeous, it's uh, darker in colour and it's also really rich and thick. I know that you can't wait to taste this, but before that, we will need to add the meat back into the curry. And just increase the heat, let it boil and then you can switch the stove off. Just like that, increase the heat, let it boil and then you can turn off the stove. It is beginning to boil, so turn the stove off. And that's about it. Fish egg curry is ready. It looks so good. And in the whole banana leaf rice series, this recipe is the toughest recipe. And if you think that you can conquer this recipe, you can conquer the other recipes because they are just so simple. 
now before I let you go remember to subscribe to our channel if you have not and of course we are all waiting for the taste test and I am also really waiting for it now I'm gonna try it first let's take a look at the curry so it's really take a nice beautiful colors I'm gonna take a little taste Guys, this is the fish head curry recipe that you are looking for. Trust me, it's just so good. And then I'm just going to take a pinch of um, meat, whatever meat I can get. Because the fish is not overcooked, it's just nicely cooked and then we removed it, remember? I cannot wait to flood my rice with this. <laughs> okay. Mm. This is just so good So so good Try it out Tell me what you think And I really cannot imagine if you were to tell me this is not good Because it's just so delicious I'm gonna have banana leaf rice in Germany So where are you making your banana leaf rice? Tell me in the comment section below and I cannot wait to see you on the website because we have just so much more functions and fun things on the website. So head on to nyoyacooking.com. Until then, as always, I wish you happy cooking!